You may not believe me. I barely believe it myself. But I can't dispute what my soul knows. Peter! John! It's all true. Come see this! Everything he said. The tomb! Every impossible detail. It's empty! It's all true. Loses its footing. You have me confused. I don't know him. And we stumble along our way. I said I don't know him! But if that day comes... May we remember what has been found what has been defeated what has been forgiven What was once dead has new life. What was once old has been made new. What was once finite has been made eternal. May we remember and follow the risen way. Good morning and happy Easter. I'm Chaplain Amy Bauman with For His Glory Ministry, and I'm so glad that you're choosing to join us today. He is alive, and we get to celebrate that today together as brothers and sisters around the world coming together today to unify our faith and worship the living King. We're going to start off with a time of offering then spend a few moments worshiping our Lord and then head right into the sermon. But it is our prayer that you find this place, a place where you belong, that we can come together and unify our faith this morning, trusting and believing in the one true risen King and worship him today. We are so glad that you're here.
All the glory of creation Everything is from your hand Reaching down out of the heavens All the skull of the heart of man Not in gold and not in silver Nothing precious or refined Across a universe of wonder You made dust your grand design Oh, praise the Lord, the Lord Most High Would a God, the breath of life Maker of this heart of mine You made dust your grand design Stepping down into the ruins Word of God becoming man Falling down with the cave Cross colliding with the sand The earth cries out in accusation But Calvary's grace won't be denied For the joy of our salvation You made us your grace
now been three weeks since I've been first. People all over the world with very real reasons are scared to death. Fear is contagious. That's the bad news. But there's also good news. There's still more to come You know you'll finish What you've begun And battles may rage But we will not fear Cause we know our victory Is standing right here contagious but so is faith and so is love and so is hope so come and move how you want to come and make the old brain. huge changes for churches as online church services quadrupled last week houses of worship now focusing on keeping members safe from the coronavirus but i'll tell you where there is a faith there is a way to worship and technology has become the new tool platform so churches can hold online services and it's made available for free to any church who wants it. 5,000 new churches have signed up this last Wednesday. Last weekend, all of the different churches that used the platform, we saw over 4.7 million unique users all over the world. We saw almost 16,000 people come to faith in Christ. I don't know where you are, but I hope you're doing this right now.
Good morning. I am so excited to be with you today. If you can't tell from the smile on my face, we get to celebrate today the risen Lord. And I grew up uh, listening to Dolly Parton's song, uh, He's Alive. I think I've already listened to that a few times on repeat today. But He's Alive and I'm Forgiven. Heaven's gates are open wide. He's Alive. And we get to celebrate that today. And I'm so excited to be celebrating that with all of you. And I pray that you've already been blessed by the worship music, uh, being able to lift our voices up to worship the Lord. I have an incredible message for you today, a word from God, and we're gonna talk about how because he's alive, because of everything he did on the cross, it is finished. Those are the three greatest words ever, it is finished. So lots to talk with you about today. Before we get started though, let's open with prayer. Father God, I can hardly contain my excitement we just thank you for how you made a way and orchestrated that you would send because you love us so much. You would send your only son to this world to walk among us, to die on a cross and to rise again from the dead, defeating the enemy, defeating death, defeating all of the brokenness of this world so that we could have everlasting life and forgiveness of sins. And Lord, we are so grateful for that today. We celebrate you. We worship you. You are worthy. We just pray that you will hear our, our praise. We pray that you will open up our ears for what it is that you have today so that we can truly receive this beautiful gift. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. We just pray for a fresh anointing that I will speak your truth with love and that you will meet us exactly where we are. We love you and praise you and thank you and ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you've been following along over the course of the month, we have been talking about rescue. We've been talking about how since the beginning, God has been saving us and protecting us and restoring us and delivering us. We've talked about some of the stories, looking at the Old Testament, the way that God has been working and moving this thread throughout the Old Testament of God saving his people, restoring his people, always bringing them back to himself and all the ways that he did that. We, we look at the stories like um, Matt had Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. We look at Daniel. We look at Noah. We, we look at all of these stories. We look at Jonah. We look at all these stories that show God rescuing his people and how he moved supernaturally to save us. We can read about God's provision to his people and his desire to be with them in community. He longed to be among his people. He longed to be uh, celebrating with them and having them be worshiping with him and to be in community with him. And if you were with us on Good Friday, we talked about altars. We talked about all these altars throughout the Old Testament where people were sacrificing uh, for the atonement of sin, sacrificing animals to worship God. And that there was this constant need for sacrifice because Sin can't be in the presence of God. I, I don't think we can fully comprehend the uh, beautiful presence of God, his holiness, his power, his majesty, and sin can't be present with that. And here, God wanted his people so badly in community with them to walk among them, to be in relationship with them that we read in the Old Testament that he created these rules and regulations. He created these ways for them to be able to, to sacrifice, to remove the sin so that he could stay with them. And this desire that he had has never changed. His desire to be close to us is always been there. His desire for us to be reconciled to himself has never gone away. So in the ultimate rescue, God, God's great love for us, 
he sent his one and only son to the world to walk among us, to show us what he is really like. The Bible says that the word became flesh and Jesus left his throne in heaven and was born among us as a baby. He grew up, started his ministry, doing everything that the father had asked him to do, all in line with his word, all fulfilling the prophecies and the words that were spoken before Jesus. And he made his way to the cross the ultimate rescue, taking our place, dying on a cross. He was perfect without sin and would be the one sacrifice, the final sacrifice that was needed for all sin, now and past sin and future sin, all sin. He died while we were still sinners and drank the cup of wrath that was meant for all of us, the ultimate rescue. I want to go over those words today, looking at what Jesus did on the cross, what happened in those moments up until the time that he died. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to John 19. We're going to be looking at that today. I'm going to start in verse 1. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they slapped him in the face. Once more Pilate came out and said to the Jews gathered there, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. And when Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and their officials saw him, they shouted, crucify, crucify. But Pilate answered, you take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. Then we drop down to verse 17. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, do not write the King of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not Tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled that said, They divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. So this is what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, Here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished 
And so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar there. So they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of a hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Amen. It is finished is only found in John 19 verse 30 and not in any of the other gospels. The Greek word translated is to telestai. To telestai. It means paid in full. Paid in full. So we got to ask ourselves, what was Jesus doing? What was Jesus doing in his ministry up until that day where he could say, it is finished? I have a hard time at the end of my work day saying it is finished with still the stack of papers on my desk or the load of laundry that I still have to, to fold. I have to make dinner. I mean, I don't think I've ever been able to, to get to the end of a day and say, it is finished. And yet Jesus has been on earth, walking, doing his ministry, teaching, healing, speaking, and he's now on the cross and he says, it is finished. Well, in Luke 4, 42 through 44, he tells us what his work was. His work was to preach the good news of the kingdom of God, which as we read through the, the gospels, we can see that Jesus did that countless times, teaching and preaching the people. And we read throughout the New Testament that he was healing the sick, seeking and saving the lost, destroying the works of the enemy, the devil. He was freeing people from evil spirits, disease, even death, and reconciling them back to God, back to his Father. He was forgiving and saving them and showing people who God the Father really was. That was his heart, to show people who his father was so that they would love him and want to serve him and want to be with him in community. All the while he was teaching the people with parable after parable after parable and story after story of how to live in this broken world. He tells them, bless are the poor in spirit for they will inherit the kingdom of God. He tells them to love one another, serve one another. And even in his final acts, before he went to the cross, he was at a table with his fellow disciples, washing their feet, serving them bread and drink, saying, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He was showing them how to serve and love one another, even up until the very end, teaching them, ministering to them how to serve and love one another in the world after he's gone. And though they couldn't fully understand everything that Jesus was saying, he was teaching them and showing them up until the very end. He walked obediently to the cross, drinking a cup of wrath that was meant for you and me, asking the Father, if it be that this cup could be taken from me, take it from me. In the garden, dripping blood, thinking about what he's going to be walking through. And yet he says, but not my will 
but your will be done. And so he gets up and he walks to the cross, obediently doing what his father had asked. A debt that he was willing to pay in full that wasn't even his debt. He was in the world human, but perfect and blameless and without sin. The perfect lamb, the perfect sacrifice. And he was willing to do that for all of us. When Jesus said, it is finished, he brought about the completion of the Old Testament prophecies. From Genesis to Malachi, 300 detailed prophecies about Jesus and he fulfilled every single one. Including from the very beginning how he would crush the serpent's head in Genesis 3.15 and talking about him in Isaiah, the suffering servant in Isaiah 53. No more offerings would need to be made the, the altar would no longer have this need for constant sacrifice, this constant need for blood, for the atonement of sin, for all the sin and all the people that, that, that were God's chosen people. No more offerings would need to be made. Nobody else would need to die. And the veil that was in the temple was torn from the top to the bottom. And if you can only imagine the size of this veil and that only God could do that. Tear it from the top to the bottom, allowing us full access to God the Father through Jesus Christ. In this act, it is finished. We have been completely restored back to the Father. We have forgiveness of sins and everlasting life. We have been redeemed. We have been reconciled back to the one who has never stopped loving us who has never stopped making a way, who has never stopped rescuing us. And not only that, when Jesus rose from the dead, he defeated death, he defeated the devil, he defeated what the enemy was trying to do, and he gave us all everlasting life eternal life in heaven with Jesus. Amen. But this is where we struggle. This is where we have a hard time understanding the gift that is right in front of us. The gift that seems to sit on the table day after day and yet we do not open it. We do not Receive what's inside. We want the gift. We want to be able to open up, but we don't fully understand. We don't fully understand in our humanness that somebody else would die on our behalf. That someone else would take the blame. That someone else would go in our place. And even more so that they were blameless and guiltless and without sin and yet still would walk to a cross for us. We have a hard time understanding that kind of love. That's because we live in a broken world with broken people and we have been hurt and we have been betrayed and we have not known unconditional love, the love that God has for us. Because we've operated each day receiving the love from other people, conditional love, watching them work and move, seeing how they treat us. And we have a hard time understanding that God would do all of this because he loves us, because he created us. And the enemy, the devil, has worked for so long moving in our lives. We've listened to his lies. We've listened to him tell us that we're unforgiven, that we're not loved, that, 
There's nothing out there for us. We might as well give up. And if we look at the shape of the world, he keeps telling us, the enemy, where is your God? When you look at all of the brokenness and all of the sin, where is your God now? Why isn't he saving you? Why isn't he helping you? Why isn't he listening to your prayers? But that's the thing. Those are lies. God is still working and moving today. And we can see God in the sunrises and the sunsets. We can see God in other people who are loving us. We can see God in all of the miracles that he does every single day. And for too long, we've allowed the enemy to distract us and detour us away from God, away from this, what we can see visually and physically and spiritually, this act of rescue, him holding out his hand still today, trying to get us to grab on. And days like today, Easter Sunday, the ultimate rescue, the ultimate act of love, we need to open our eyes and see what God has been doing, what he's still doing today, and how much he loves us. What if today we admit that we need to be rescued? And in doing so, we need to surrender. We need to surrender our will, surrender our ways, surrender our old way of thinking. We need to surrender our disbelief and how how hard it is for us to understand. We need to surrender the lies that we've been living, the lies we've been believing, and the way the enemy has worked and moved. We need to allow the Lord to say, it is finished in our lives today and believe it and receive it. What would that look like? What would that look like to allow the Lord to say, it is finished today? This is what it would look like. Sin, it is finished. Depression, it is finished. Addiction, it is finished. Bondage, it is finished. Believing every lie from the enemy that we are unworthy and unloved and unforgiving and it is finished. No more. What if we expected and believed that what Jesus did on the cross was enough? was enough for everything that we've done and for everything that we are still going to do while we live here in this broken world? What if we accepted and believed that what Jesus did on the cross washed away every sin, every piece of shame, every past mistake, every wrong choice, every hurtful word until all that was left is this original design of who God created sons and daughters of the Most High King, loved, forgiven, and free. What if we today joined our voices with Jesus and said, yes, it is finished. And I believe, I believe that over my life today. Today, my friends, you need to know that Jesus is the only solution. He's the only solution for what we see in the world today. The the brokenness and the hardship and the pain and the sickness. Jesus is the only solution. He's the only way to God. And when we confess our sins and want to fully live in the right relationship with him, aligning our lives with his word, That is when he'll be able to work and move and help us do everything we need to do to come into that full restoration with God, his children. Since Eve and Adam took the apple when sin entered the world, God has been working and moving to restore us back to him. And because of Jesus' death, sin has been defeated. Death has been 
defeated. And we are promised an eternity in heaven. When Jesus rose again from the dead, we rose with him. That resurrection, that full freedom, that everlasting life, and everything that has in our past, every sin, every mistake, is all gone. It has been washed away. It is no longer. It is finished. Because of Jesus, we can say, he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. And we can stand confident that no matter what comes our way, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Everything is under our feet because of Jesus living inside of us. And we can walk on top of our situations instead of walking underneath them. We can say today confidently, it is finished. Are we ready to be rescued? Are we ready to grab on to Jesus' hand and allow him to come in and work and move in our lives and restore us, fully restore us the way it was designed to happen? Are we ready for him to come in and be Lord and Savior of our life until our end? Jesus is reaching out for his, his, us. his hand is reaching out for yours and for mine, and he's waiting for you to surrender, to grab hold, and to take his hand, to lift you up out of the darkness, out of your situation, out of your addiction, out of your bondage, out of your depression, out of your situation, out of your old way of life, out of your sin, and he wants to reconcile you back to God. Nothing else will work. I've tried it all. Only Jesus. Jesus is the only way. I want to remind you today that this earth, this broken world, this is not our home. This is not where we're going to hang out for all time. This is only this much of our life compared to an eternity in heaven. I also want to remind you that what Jesus did on the cross wasn't a couple days ago. And we're not just today celebrating the risen Lord. No, what he did was thousands of years ago. And we are living in the end times. However long that is, we are getting closer to the end than what we even realize. When you read the Bible and you look at the world today, we are closer and closer to that. There are famine and plagues and wars and rumors of wars and sickness and earthquakes and storms and weather and all the things that the Bible tells us to be on the lookout for. Those are happening today. No one knows when Jesus is coming back. No one knows the, the final day or hour. And that's why it's never been more important than right now to grab his hand, to allow him to come in and work and move, to be savior of your life, to know who you believe in, to know what your truth is, to know who you are going to follow, and to know where you are going when your time comes. Believing that it is finished and that you have forgiveness of sins and everlasting life is just the first step. Recognizing that you need Jesus is just the first step. When you're living for Jesus, that's every single day, the rest of your life. Every single day you are waking up to make that choice that today I am going to serve the Lord. I am going to follow him. I am going to lay aside the desires of the flesh and only 
keep my eyes on Jesus, not on the world. Every day that's aligning your life with his word, spending time in his word, understanding what your truth is, believing that God's word is God's will. And walking that out every day in faith, no matter the circumstance, no matter the situation, because this is a broken world and we are going to have trouble. But there's never been a more important time to stay steadfast and choose who you are going to follow until the very end. I want to leave you with a word from Revelations 22. It's at the very end of the Bible, the last page. It reads this. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city and his servants will serve him. They will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. There will not need the lamp of the light or the light of the sun for the Lord God will give them light and they will reign forever and ever. And then we'll drop down to verse 12. Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me and I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes that they might have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Outside are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexual immor immoral, the murderers, the adulterers, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come. And let the one who hears say, come. Let the one who is thirsty, come. And let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this scroll. If anyone adds anything to them, God will add to that person the plagues described in the scroll. And if anyone takes away from this scroll of prophecy, God will take away from that person any share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this scroll. He who testifies to these things say, yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. My friends, it is finished. The greatest rescue ever was Jesus dying on the cross and rising from the dead for all humanity, for all our sins. Are you ready to surrender? Don't wait. Do it today. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you. I thank you that you love us so much that you sent your one and only son to walk among us, to teach us how to be like him, to teach us who you are, to obediently walk to a cross, to die an awful death so that we could have forgiveness of sins, so that we could have everlasting life so that no other sacrifice need needed to be made, Lord, only one. 
and that we can celebrate that today, what Jesus did, and that he is alive and risen from the dead and is waiting to grab our hands. I pray for each person watching today, each person listening, that they will choose you, that they will choose to grab on to your hand, That they will choose you as Savior over their life to live every single day. Not just Easter Sunday, but Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and every day following, Lord, until you come again. Help us, Lord, live here in this broken world. Help us to love. Help us to serve. Help us to remember how you lived, Lord, serving others, washing feet, feeding the hungry, helping the hurting, teaching everyone about you. Lord, no matter what we're facing, let us remember that you are greater. You are greater than addiction. You are greater than depression. You are greater than the bondage that we feel in this world. Help us to overcome. Help us in our disbelief. Help us open the gift that is waiting for all of us, Lord. Help us today. We thank you for this time. We thank you that we can worship you. We thank you for everything that you are doing. We love you and praise you and thank you and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to end with one final hymn today. Jesus paid it all to Telestai. It is finished. My friends, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for joining us. Happy Easter. And until next time, until we can be together again, be blessed. I hear the Savior say Thy strength Indeed is small Child of weakness Watch and pray Find in me Thine all in all Jesus paid it all All to him I owe Sin had left a crimson stain He washed White as snow Lord, now indeed I find Thy power and thine alone Can change the leper spots And melt the heart of snow paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as Jesus died my soul to save, my lips shall still repeat, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe, sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. He washed it white as snow.